fellow bikers. Uh, today I would like to uh, talk to you guys about some possible modifications that can be done to this bike to really transform its looks. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, we'll get started. One modification done to the bike is the uh, windscreen, which is a Dart Classic fly screen. That's D-A-R-T. They offer it in two colors, dark smoke and light tint. I don't know which color mine is. Um, the reason being is that I checked their website and the dark smoke one looks a lot darker than this one so I am inclined to think that this might be the light tint it is 10 inches high uh, made of high impact polycarbonate and has anti scratch coating mine though is a bit blemished by white rainy specks or spots on the inside caused by some sort of acid rain or other agent uh, it was so when I bought it, thus I believe it is susceptible to damage on its coating. It also comes with the necessary mounting bracket and all uh, necessary grommets, screws, etc. The windscreen costs about $120, $130. So it begs the question, is it worth it? It depends, really, on how you intend to use the bike. It offers minimal wind protection. At, high sp uh, at speeds higher than 40 uh, mile per miles per hour, one definitely feels the wind blast. I added uh, uh, tall windscreens to most of my previous scooters because I rode them all year round, which is why initially I had mixed feelings about it, just as I did for the bar and mirrors, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, I think though that it is perfect for a bike like this if you intend, like I do, to ride it mostly on local roads. Though protection is minimal, it, aroused, uh, it allows the rider to cool at slow speeds, preventing rider from sweating like a pig. Yet, it preserves the bike's classic looks, which is, I think, the, uh, the point here. The second modification done to the bike includes the bar and mirrors. The stock mirrors were replaced with these bar and mirrors which based on their design I think are uh, mic tuning round mirrors. Um, they're retractable mirrors and you can fold them for lane splitting if that's your uh, thing or when storing the bike if space is indeed an issue. One thing I have to point out about these mirrors is that you have to carry a hex key with you because they do tend to loosen up uh, a bit at times. On Amazon you can find these for 18 bucks. On Revzilla similar mirrors run for about $80. If these indeed cost 18 bucks then I say they are definitely worth it. So are they worth it though? When going at speeds, the mirrors sometimes fold due to wind pressure. Uh, they also buzz at higher speeds than 40 miles per hour. This is the reason that at first I considered removing them because I didn't like how they extended um, and their reliability was in question. They move, loosen up and fold all randomly. In the end, I, uh, I got used to them and I uh, learned to live with them. Um, they have kind of surprised me with how effective they are in city riding. Uh, they do serve their purpose if you use them in city riding, so you seldom have to look over your shoulder unless when checking for blind spots. In highway riding though, you might have to look over your shoulder quite a bit as they fold up due to wind blast. For me, I also appreciate them because um, they, they do add to the aesthetics of the bike, uh, preserving its uh, quasi cafe racer look. So, to each his own, I guess. Next, we have the uh, phone mount accessory. This is the uh, TAC Form Enduro Motorcycle Mount. 
it came with the motorcycle so I didn't purchase it uh, for all my previous scooters I, uh, I, I, I actually installed the ram mount and I really like them a lot they're very practical though I'm not familiar with the tack for Mindura mounts I have found mine to be very very sturdy um, it pivots in all practical directions it costs about um, 60 bucks like uh, like most mounts of this quality so is it worth it again it depends on your budget and how you intend to use the bike if you intend uh, to explore then you might need it though it is costly in my opinion the adjustable clutch lever is another modification down to the bike this particular clutch is I believe though I'm not sure that it is a Puig a Puig brand it's very light and strong I, I, I really like it uh, this bike has a, um, a wet clutch so it's a very light clutch and I appreciate this lever's ability to set the distance uh, uh, which is most comfortable for me, for my hand. Um, it does its job very well, though I have to say that it is only barely, it only barely fits three, three of my fingers due to uh, its stunted size. It costs about um, 50 to 60 bucks. Um, as you probably noticed, I have left the uh, stock brake lever on the uh, right hand side of the bike even though it is a blemish on the aesthetics of the bike. Uh, I kind of like it uh, that it allows for all fingers to fit in, in it for stronger, more reliable grip and squeeze when needed. Uh, you definitely don't want to play around with your front brakes. <laughs> Um, if anyone has uh, suggestions um, for replacing it with something more uh, suitable, uh, please let me know. Last but uh, not least, uh, we have the exhaust pipe. Designed specifically for the Suzuki ST250, uh, which in our continent is known as the TU250X, this pipe is a high-performance Neo stainless captain type muffler produced uh, by the Japanese uh, company WM Wellington. They provide custom parts for these types of motorcycles. The previous owner had it shipped from Japan which ran him somewhere around 400 bucks. Now this prize begs the question, is it worth it? Well let's listen to its sound since the sound of bike makes is music to a bike uh, biker's ears as you can hear the sound is deep it purrs most of the time but it's not afraid to let the nearby riders that uh, it's there if needed it's both quiet and loud as commanded i love its sound and it, it really transforms the looks and function of the bike of all the modifications this is the one i probably appreciate the most it makes the ride that uh, that much more joyful would i have purchased it though i don't know the price is a bit prohibitive for my wallet on a three thousand to four thousand dollar bike an additional four hundred dollars sounds a bit too much so honestly I don't know if I would have invested it uh, in it considering my current finances though I deeply appreciate its existence one last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the uh, suspension although it has not been modified the rear stock suspension which includes preload adjustable twin shocks is one thing I'm definitely consider uh, considering modifying the seat is very comfortable uh, very plush I was very surprised by how comfortable the seat is. On a scale of 1 to 10, the seat is a 7. Yet, though it is considerably uh, comfortable as is, I do have issues with my lower back. So, um, you know, that is a reason uh, I am considering upgrading the suspension. If you fellow bikers have any ideas on this matter, please share them with me. I would appreciate them.
to conclude altogether these modifications will run you about 600 to 700 bucks uh, are they all worth it it depends honestly I couldn't afford them if the uh, if the previous owner had not installed them I would not have installed them all I would have prioritized them I would have started uh, with the windscreen and uh, the suspension next I would have added the phone mount and then I would have considered the exhaust pipe before we part ways I do want to point out that the objective of this video is not to advertise these products but rather inform you on the potential modifications one can do to this type of motorcycle and to that end I hope that this video helped inform you and until next time be well and ride safely